to the Upcycle Canada podcast. I'm Jennifer, and together with my husband Dave, we started with an idea, worked on it as a side hustle, and grew it into our our first eco-friendly store. At Upcycle Canada, we repurpose, refinish, and reuse discarded items, giving them new life. Sit in on the conversation as we continue to grow from a small side hustle into something much more. Special guests will drop by and share their journey with you as well. This is the most eco-friendly small business podcast in your favorites. This is Upcycle Canada, where yesterday's items are reborn. Let's do this. Hi, I'm John Lyon. I am the hockey stick guy from Toronto, Ontario. I'm happy to be here to do the Upcycle Canada podcast tonight. All right. Awesome. Thanks, John. Thank you very much. And nice jersey, John. I see that. Look at that. We're all decked out. Sporting a jersey. (laughs) (laughs) I am am a long-suffering Leaf fan, like, and there's lots of us. (laughs) So the only downside to this is Paige, if she sees this, we're in trouble because Paige at the store is a Montreal fan. Yes. So she's going to be commenting on the fact that I'm Rangers and you're Canada Canada. and you're Toronto. (laughs) So Paige might be a little upset, but we'll deal with that later. (laughs) I heard, and I I, uh, I have it in my mind. Uh, she wanted wants a few more Montreal Canadiens items in the store, so I'm working yes, on. Yes, you've heard. That's right. Yes. <laughs> yes, she is a diehard, and she uh, her family. They're yeah, all they're, they're all very, involved. Yeah, they're very Montreal. Very passionate. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, it's great to see you, John. Yes. Thank you and for you. taking time for us tonight. Uh, we are lucky and blessed to have your products in our store. Right. We've had some great comments, some great customer feedback on what you make. We've had people coming back for more, which is always good. And uh, we've been together for how long then over, in the store? Over a year. Over a year you've sure, been with us? Yeah, because you. I remember you coming last Christmas too. No, so, I, yeah. I, uh, yeah. I started with you right around COVID, February of 2020 or March of 2020, right, right around when you opened the store. Yeah, that's okay. right. Yeah. Time goes fast. Yeah, oh, that's geez. amazing. And, you, and you're, the first, you're the first store that I'm in. Um, I'm in. I'm in three more now. I'm in four total. But you have a special place in my heart, being the first. Aww, nice. See? That's so nice of you. That's great. <laughs> so, so John, how did how did this all start for you? What was the what was the first thing you did, and and what was the idea behind starting something like this? Well, yeah, I've I've always been like the the, the names right there. I've always been a hockey guy ever since I was a kid. And um, not to make it too long a story, I guess. When I was six years old, my brother was drafted by the Minnesota North Stars and proceeded to have a, you know, a minor league career with a few games with the Pittsburgh Penguins. And so, oh wow! Mm-hmm. And I was six years old, so I'm like, wow! I get to watch this pro hockey and go down and visit the cities where he's playing and practice with the team, go in the press box, and so you know, it kind of shaped my early interest in hockey. That's for sure. I always played uh, at a high level. You know, it turned out I was I was pretty good too, and played, you know, Triple A hockey in Toronto and Junior A hockey in Toronto and Provincial Junior A. It was drafted by the Windsor Spitfire, so I was always like a hockey guy. It was hockey culture in my family, hockey, 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 and so later coaching, managing my kids, whoever. So I, I ended up saving a bunch of sticks. I you know, I, I wake up one day five, eight years ago, and I've got you know forty, fifty sticks in my garage. I want to build something. I always wanted to build a, a coffee table. Built a coffee table. Everyone, everyone liked it, and I've, I've basically continued from there. That's the, that's the kind of the genesis of it. Now I'm now I'm selling you know ten, fifteen different products, and uh, and things are going well. That's that's how I got started. Always interested in hockey. Saved my own sticks and built a keepsake and, and then kind of kept going from there. So is this considered um, like a side thing for you or do you do this full time or do you have a regular full time job and this is like your... Oh yeah, no, this is definitely my part time job. I'm still working full time. I'm an urban planner, you know, in, in the city and, and so, but you know, really with COVID, you know, when I started with you in the store two years ago, March of 2020, when everyone got shut down. I'm in my bungalow in Toronto with my wife and two daughters and, you know, we're all working from here and we don't have enough uh, internet and so on and so forth. To, and so the evenings comes around, well, what are you going to do? So I went out to the garage and I started building, you know, and uh, I joke that I haven't, you know, haven't come out of the garage since March of 2020. I've been, I've been building a lot of stuff. You know, it's, 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 uh, it's cold in the winter, it's hot in the summer, but, you know, it, it gives me, I guess, an outlet to, you know, get out of everybody's hair and be creative and uh, do something that I enjoy. Time goes quickly when I'm out there. So it's rewarding to have something 
on the side that kind of is a passion project, something that you enjoy doing. It's not really, it's a lot of work, obviously, to do what you're doing, but it's not your full-time job. So you have that as kind of a deflection, Mm -hmm. right, from your everyday responsibilities and everything you're doing for your regular full-time job. And it's just this nice little side thing. You can work when you want to. You don't want to work. You don't need to work, right? But it sounds like you're getting busier over time. <laughs> yeah, you're funny. You make me think because mm-hmm. uh, I am getting busier. And sometimes I do. I don't really like it when I have too many orders that I have to fill. Kind of the best time is or maybe the most fun project that you work on is something that's not been ordered for somebody. Something that you you just want to do. Whether you, you, know, you like the idea of it. You like the colors. You like the team. You know, because I do a lot of NHL team theme things. So, for example, I'm working on a couple of California Golden Seals items right now. You may remember the, or not, the California Golden Seals were a team in the 1970s, you know, when I was a kid. They were terrible. They, they haven't existed for a long time. Everyone liked their colors. They're green and yellow and white. And they had white skates. They were very famous for the white skates. So so I'm, I'm doing some California Golden Seals stuff right now. I think that'll go over well with the... Well, older people who remember the seals. So, yeah, I'm doing all kinds of different things. Doing some some Team Canada stuff. I'm doing some Team USA stuff. I'm doing all kinds of different different theme stuff. Maybe even mixing in some other sports like some golf clubs, as you know, and maybe some baseball items. And so, yeah, we'll see see where I go next. Who knows? It's hmm. exciting, and this is not just a local thing in Toronto, right? You are growing. You are have your audience, and you're shipping to different places outside of Ontario and outside of your area. So like, tell us about growing that way as well. Sure, well, I mean, when I started, I was just thinking, and when I started, I I don't know much about business. I didn't have a business plan. I just started to build. And so, so you start from the beginning, you were the first store that I was in. I'm in three other stores now, one in Toronto, one in Victoria Harbor, and one in Gravenhurst. And they all sell well, well, different things sell well at the different stores, but, I also um, sell a lot on Kijiji, Facebook, and Instagram, and I'm able to reach the kind of international audience, particularly the States, and so I do sell to a lot of hockey crazy families in the States, mostly in the northeastern, you know, snowy states, and I was recently just telling you that I made my first overseas sale, Uh, I guess it was in the fall, I sent something to a fellow in Taiwan who used to live in Montreal, so... I, and I have a number of inquiries from Germany and other um, other countries. So, I mean, I'll if somebody wants to pay the shipping, I'll I'll send them a product. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. That's encouraging, right? When you're when you're out there working in the garage, you're thinking, what could this side hustle become? Yeah. You know, it's it's it, you're seeing the results. You're seeing people come back with great feedback on a great product that you make, which is great. I, I really I think that's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, the feedback has been quite good and. Well, like you in your store, you what I really appreciate, frankly, is a repeat customer. And so, you know, because, you know, you've done a good job with the first, you know, the first product or products you've made for them. And so I'm starting to get people coming back now for whatever other items for their for the rec room or man man cave or woman cave. And uh, because a lot of my a lot of my customers are women, I get more women buying than men. So I have to be kind of aware of uh, who I'm selling to. Yeah, I do. Um, I don't know, maybe. Maybe 70 percent of my customers are women, which is quite, which is awesome. Even in our store, I've seen most of the people that are shopping are women. Like you said, for either their son or brother or husband, um, and yeah, and I've even had a woman come in or say, daughter, or yeah, daughter, daughter or yeah. themselves, and they're like, "Oh, I've got that, I've got that," and like they, they've walked through the store, a repeat customer, and they and they're naming off some of the things that they've already purchased from you, kind of looking for something new, right? Again. And uh, it's neat to see the customers come back and, and acknowledge what they've already purchased of and how they like it and stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I will admit that the repeat customer is my, my favorite kind of customer. Yeah, definitely. We've had some really interesting comments, too. Like, we try to put your stuff outside the store, in the walkway in front of the store. Mm-hmm. So we'll put your coat racks, your standing hockey stick coat racks. Those are always popular. We put those out. We put your... Yep. Uh, you put your Canadian flag ones and your American flag ones you've been doing, mm-hmm. putting them right outside. Yeah. And it, you see people walking along and they stop, they back up, they're looking at it. They're, they're looking at the pucks holding the mm-hmm. uh, standing rack up. They're just like, like shocked. They're like, where, where did this come from? Like, you don't see this everywhere, you know, and it's, I love the uniqueness of what you're making. It's, 
It's great products. Yeah, thank you. And one of the things I like too is, you know, even if I do another a, a, a product again and again and again, it's never the same because you're, whatever you're do, do different sticks, different colored sticks, different different trim, different colored trim, different hooks, different pucks. It's it's never you know it's never exactly the same. And so that I like. It's amazing. Do you it's have really um? Cool. Do you have a favorite thing you prefer to make, or is there some things that sell the most, like or any of that? <laughs> yeah. That's a good question. Well, you know, funny. Um, so, in fact, I, I mean, I brought I brought a couple things to show. Oh, perfect. Nice. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, I, mean, right just, I mean, so I've, I mean, this is not necessarily my favorite. I'm not a big Philadelphia Flash fan, but I do like the colors. I do like the orange <laughs> and the orange hooks were yeah. unique. And so, um, you know, like yeah, I can great. do most NHL teams in this kind of a theme. Some colors are harder to find, like like teal for the San Jose Sharks is really difficult and. Purple for Anaheim, yeah. but anyway, so these racks I can do. Uh, they're they're you know they're not too expensive to purchase. They're not hard to make. I, I like them because you know they, there's a lot of color. There's a team puck. There's team colors. Sometimes yeah. even the correct color hooks. So so these these I like. Um, th- this yeah. generally speaking, like smaller items, like the ones I just showed you, sell well at your store and other stores. But um, yeah. one of the, the things that sell well for me directly from home from my garage are larger and primarily coffee tables and benches sell well for me. Mm -hmm. If people find me online um, and they they do a special team theme or they do a special, you know, they provide their sticks if they're living close to me and say, can you do a keepsake? So to answer your question specifically, coffee tables are my, my, my most, my most favorite things to do. They're the easiest, they're easiest on my body. And, uh, yeah. Uh, I just like they, they, there's a, there's a good bang for the work there. It looks nice. It's big. It's colorful. That's my favorite thing. This is the coffee table. Awesome. That's good. So if somebody was out there, John, and they wanted to create their own business, their own side hustle, what kind of advice would you give them as Ooh. far as a starting out? And they don't have a business plan. They don't have everything figured out, but they want to start. What would you suggest to them? Well, that's a question that I wasn't expecting because I, again, I'm not, I'm not really a business person and I, I kind of still don't consider myself a business person. I consider myself just a guy in his garage kind of fooling around making stuff. Um, so, I, I, honestly, my advice would be just to, if you have an idea of something that you think you would like to do uh, and or you think somebody else would like the look of it, make it. Um, see if you can, you know, see what people think. Get the feedback. See if you can sell it. Contact stores like yourselves or... You know, I've had I've had good luck uh, contacting stores, and frankly, some of the stores that I'm in, they contacted me because uh, they saw my stuff online. So, <laughs> I'd say the the online presence is very important. I'm not great with the the technology, but you know, if you, if you can take a picture of your stuff and put it on on uh, social media to sell, then you know that's that's a good start. And so, yeah, if you if you have any idea, there's 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 tons of uh, interesting things that I've uh, seen, given. You know, some of the groups I'm, I'm involved in, a group called Hockey Homemade or Hockey Small Business, for example. All kinds of, you know, whatever, lanyards, glasses, personalized pucks, T-shirts, flags that people make all over the place. It's amazing. Well, you, you're, you're in the business. You, you, you see all kinds of interesting things that people make. So if you have an idea, something you want to try, try it. I bet you it'll work out. That's my advice. Yeah. <laughs> and so being... You have people buying, like you mentioned, people shopping and buying things from you, and they're not here in Toronto. They're not here in Ontario. So how how are most of your customers outside of your area finding you then? Is it through social media? Oh, for sure. Um, as I said, okay. Kijiji, Facebook Marketplace, and Instagram. Um, not very much Kijiji for whatever reason, but Facebook Marketplace and Instagram are my uh, two go-tos. My daughter's actually built me a website for Christmas, which I don't have up and running yet. I think that will, will work well. Um, yeah. But yeah, as I was saying, you'd be surprised. Uh, that would be my advice to anyone who's listening is that if you want Facebook Marketplace, there's a group for pretty much anything. If you like uh, Doug and the Slugs or Men Without Hats or the Beatles, there's groups that like those, those bands. If you like hockey stick furniture, there's a group of people that like that. If you like baseball hats, there's a group that people, you know, and so... If there's, there's a, I think there's a, a group of like-minded people that you can, well, you can find and, you know, perhaps sell to. Mm-hmm. That's really smart. That's really good. Cool. So what are some of your future plans? 
Yeah. What are some of your future plans for you and for your side hustle? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's a good question. I mean, you know, right now, uh, I'm just happy to have kind of gotten over the Christmas rush because I, I was awful busy at Christmas. I had to turn away a few people, which I didn't like doing, you know, but I couldn't mm. guarantee them by Christmas. So then spilling over to January and February, I've cleaned some stuff up and I, I still have a few things to work on. So um, I am planning on uh, continuing to refresh my stores like yours as they sell items. So I kind of have to have stuff on, on available. Um, I did a, last summer I did a few marketplaces. So I did a, well, you, you, you've done them. I did one full week. I did a weekend and I did a day at different places. So the place that I did a week, uh, the Muskoka Shipyards in Gravenhurst, was good, uh, and I, I'm I'm booking another week there. So that requires, you know, dozens of items to to be ready. Yeah. So I I'll I'll start building for that is what I'll do, and of yeah. course I, I have a summer cottage myself, so I slow I, I don't I gotta have some fun in the summer, so I don't I don't yeah. I don't I build on the weekends, but not as much as I do in the winter. Split that yeah, way. kind of stockpile some inventory then in preparing for the for the future dates and stuff, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so, I mean, yeah. I, you never really have enough, I, I find, because well, you never have enough. <laughs> That's a good problem. Yeah, because again, you need. Well, I guess, but you, I mean, you you know, uh, if you're going to a show, which I, maybe you don't do anymore, but I know you used to do a lot of shows. You need, you know, uh, whatever, 30, 40, 50, 60 items, depending what you're selling. You know, to make sure you're stocked, you know, to sell for a weekend or a week or whatever. It's a lot of stuff, a lot of items, a lot of labor. Yeah, we're mm -hmm. actually getting invited back to shows now. And we've, uh, we're setting up in Hamilton. We have a show coming up in Hamilton in June. We have another show at another event in uh, Vineland coming up. We're going to be bringing your stuff yes. as a representation of the store. Right. And to promote oh, you as awesome. well. Bringing you to those shows as well and having your stuff on, on sale for there. So. That sounds great. We'll see there. There's more more work for me. You just I just got busier. <laughs> <laughs> so we'd like to be able to take a piece of the store so people can get an experience of shopping at Upcycle Canada and get a taste of the different vendors in our store and That's how right. unique everyone is. Yeah. And we in doing podcast interviews, we're interviewing people who are like you, diverting items from the landfill and giving something new purpose, right? And we all are in different lanes, but we're all headed in the same direction, right? So with you're doing hockey sticks, we're doing wood and painting wood. We have people who do textiles. We have all different people in the store that are mm -hmm. kind of doing something unique about repurposing. So for you, uh, why is repurposing and diverting hockey sticks from potentially going in the landfill? Why is that important to you? Yeah. Well, you know, I was thinking about that before we came on the air. And um, so briefly, I mean, so my background is in, in urban planning or planning, as I told you. I did my uh, my master's at the University of Guelph in, in rural planning and resource management. And so and in fact, my thesis was in the area of waste reduction campaigns and reduce reusing recycling and so on. Uh, I have a background <laughs> yes. uh, in construction, in construction from summer work uh, when I was a teenager and in my 20s. And so if you think of it, you know, this, this, this fun work and business that I'm doing with hockey sticks kind of encompasses everything. And my love of hockey and interest in construction and, and waste management and re reducing, reusing and recycling of hockey sticks, keeping them out of landfill, repurposing all these wonderful items. So I, I didn't really kind of realize that that was ha the case until I thought about it, you know, preparing to talk to you. But it's a nice uh, tie-in. Yeah, it checks a lot of boxes, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. like goes sure right down the plus, you know, plus, you know, I just think they look so damn cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> when, I, when, I, okay. when I look at something like this, yeah. um, certain, like this is kind of a one that's made to look a bit more rustic and yeah. you know, older looking hooks and older looking sticks. And I have some even older looking sticks uh, that uh, mm. seem to make a really good, in fact, I have one here. S certain, certain places in the province really like, like cottage country. They really like. I've given. I hope I've given you guys something like this. But oh yeah, we'll Those see how old yeah, these yeah. are. In fact, they're so old. They're so old. You can't read the uh, the, the brand name, or primarily, or that's, can't that's read gorgeous, any of them. It's gorgeous, John. It's gorgeous. Oh, yeah, I, thank you. I found that, that these have sold well, and so you know, it's a bit of a struggle to find the old sticks. It's a bit of a struggle to find the old hooks. 
It's a bit of a, now the, the trim's a little easier. It's just kind of any kind of old beat up wood, but yeah, these yeah. are, these are popular. Um, That's think really of nice. this in a, you know, in, a, in an old cottage in the, in Muskoka or Halliburton or Georgian Bay. People like them. Yeah. You can picture so, that in a bar. Yeah, those, those I really like. Yeah. 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 Bar, yeah. bar, you know, some, some, I haven't targeted, you know, uh, sports bars or, you know, sports stores or anything of that nature is something I should consider. But yeah, I guess it would look nice in a bar. Yeah. So um, as far as the hockey sticks go, like you've had your own personal collection. Do you, if people have some that they want to donate to you or at a, probably a small fee, I don't know how people with their hockey sticks, if there's some that they want to get rid of, how would they contact you to, to be able to collect those things for yourself for these projects? Right. Well, I mean, they can contact you through the store, say, for example, mm -hmm. if I'll give sure. out my information here. But I mean, I have I have ads up, you know, on social media that I will uh, come and collect your hockey sticks out of your garage. If you're, you know, don't don't throw them out. I'll, I'll repurpose them. In fact, I just okay. had a fellow. Uh, and I, frankly, I have some regular suppliers as well, uh, folks that work at hockey rinks that will save them okay. for me, you know, and, and give them to me or sell them to me at a mo modest price. I just... I had another fellow yesterday who is collecting them works at a rink. So these are, and, uh, you know, think, I, I give away all my secrets. Think about it this way. You think in Southern Ontario, you think, you think, well, the average person, how many hockey sticks do they have in their garage? The answer is a lot. <laughs> and so, you know, as the kids get older, you know, or they move out or, you know, they sell the house, what do they do with the sticks? Well, I don't want them to end up in landfill. You know, and there's some mm -hmm. pretty cool things in people's garages that, you know, that then can, that can make something nice like this, you know, and live on yeah. for another 50 years. So, uh, yeah, you know, I'm happy to do it. And so I have the ads up. I'm happy to, you know, I will uh, pay a modest price or you know, free is always better for, yeah. you know, a small <laughs> business, as you know, for, for your costs. Because there's a lot of other costs in the stuff that you do as well. Yeah. And there's, I guess a big part of your cost is your time and effort. Right. To, to work with this material and repurpose it, it does take a lot of time. Mm -hmm. It sure does. I, you know, I was trying to estimate how many hours a week I spend at it. And it, it's it, the mind kind of boggles, whether it's, you know, searching online for products or dealing with with customers online or, you know, the, yeah. I, I do. I'm a bit crazy. I do. I will drive a longer way to pick up, you know, sticks, hooks, pucks helmets anything i can use so i have mm -hmm. to be careful otherwise i'll i'll drive three hours one way to pick up you know <laughs> something and that's that's not yeah. wise use of time yeah no, yeah no, that's for sure so, yeah. but there's the lots easiest. of stuff in southern ontario right we're we're we're, yeah. we're the self-described hockey hockey capital of the world you know in southern ontario so there's lots of hockey stuff here yeah and it's not easy for people to ship this kind of stuff to you it's it's awkward it's big it's long long sticks whatever so yeah definitely if you can re reach it you know in a like a travel instead of shipping something yeah it's definitely better yep. yeah 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 for sure sticks are yeah. very awkward um yeah. you're right but but in the right in the right circumstance i mean i do i have shipped sticks i have sold some sticks you know large lots to other people who are building with them or I have purchased large lots, you know, from other parts of the country. If the price is right, it's worth it. Let's put it that way. You know, if, yeah, I'm talking large amounts, like 100 sticks or something. Yeah. Not worth that's it for five or ten. No. Yeah. No, that's yep. great. It's really good. So you said the website will be coming in the future. That's a nice addition as well. Um, yeah. I, I, I wonder where that will take me. You know, and I've also yeah. considered... Um, going on other websites i haven't uh for example etsy or or i guess yeah. ebay but etsy in particular right where you you know they they i guess you pay a portion of your you know of your proceeds right to the website the other ones yeah. that i'm on yeah. you know so far are free of charge so yeah that's another different thing and then there's the shipping baked into that as well so we've tried etsy as well we sold a couple things um but then yeah just having your own website it, you're you're going to open a door, John, to uh, a lot of people checking out your stuff, and I don't know, you're going to get even busier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, you know, honestly, I, I am a little bit nervous about that because you know, yeah. it's just it, it's part time for me, and I I'm enjoying it, and it's it's probably just about the right level of busyness for me now. Mm -hmm. 
as I think I told you, I was happy, I'm happy because I think I'm clearing some stuff up this week and then I can uh, do what I want or, you know, what are just experiment a little bit. And yeah. so, so yeah, so yeah, we'll see. You'll see how, uh, I don't want to get too busy. You're right. Although yeah. I do, I do have maybe retirement coming in a few years. So we'll see. I'll, I'll have to decide if I want to go, go uh, both feet in at that time. Well, the nice thing if about I still, having if a... I have, yeah, if you have if I fingers. haven't cut my fingers, <laughs> <laughs> the That's nice right. thing about having a side hustle, though, is that if it does end up being something in the future, you've started it now. You're not going to wait until you retire and then start a side hustle, right? You've kind of built this up over time. You can kind of see how it goes, and if it works out well and you're enjoying it, it could lead into something for you at in a retirement situation. Right. But like I said, you're not waiting and nope. then starting new, right? You have this in your back pocket and. You can grow it as you want. You can slow down as you want. It's you're in control of this right now. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're right. And so, without being too specific, like a few years ago, you know, my prices were a little lower. Now they're a little higher, and that's fine. And um, you know, you I give you pick and choose a little bit well, what you want to do, what projects you want to work on. You know, you don't have to take every every person's not order, but their their ideas. If they, you know, some people may call me with a an idea where they want to build something very unusual. And I'll say, oh, you know, that's, I'm just not, I'm not, I'm too busy to take, you know, to experiment, yeah. you know, by doing that. I'm sorry. Cause I, yeah. I do have, you know, a full line of, you know, 10, 12, 14 products that I already make that keeps me busy. So, yeah. That, so you're, it's nice to, to be in control of it, as you say, a little bit, your, your choice. And I like, um, we, before we hit record, John, you were telling us a story about a, a very important piece that you made recently uh, for a family here in our area in Niagara, and uh, I'd love to kind of share that story with people because it's it's nice to to meet a maker who puts their heart into something special and unique for a family, and uh, you did that in this situation. So tell us a little bit about the bench that you made. Sure. Um, well, as I was saying, I mean, as part of my work, you know, I do end up doing you know occasionally. Uh, memorial items for for folks who have passed away and uh you know in their favorite team color or sometimes with the sticks that they have used you know their family has given me but i was commissioned in the fall of this year to make a bench for a young fellow i think he was eight to ten years old he was a, a grade school student from the niagara area and a woman found me you know on social media and she commissioned me to make a bench you know in, in his honor he'd passed away a couple years ago um and um so the bench is ready, paid for, and yet to be picked up. And there's a plaque on it, you know, the the fellow's name. I guess I, I won't say it in case, uh, yeah. you know, it's the one to remain private or, or confidential. Um, but then I was watching, I was watching the Leaf game last night, and um, I hear the Alex Ovechkin and, the, and a young cancer patient that he had befriended from the Niagara area, and it was this this fellow's name. And I, wait, I, I know that. I wait, I did a bench for that guy, and That's so. Amazing. And yeah, so that just uh, this this fellow had uh, you know Alex Ovechkin had uh, sh- flown him down to to Washington many times, and he was you know I guess diagnosed with terminal cancer at a very young age, and they became very close, and and this young fellow did in, did in fact pass away, I, I believe two years ago, and uh, so happy to do the bench for him, and uh, feel honored. The, the bench will go to his former grade school. Uh, it's called a buddy bench. Uh, I understand if you know you if you're feeling lonely or sad or Whichever you go sit on the bench, and this is an invitation for other students, parents, and teachers, whatever, to come sit with you and talk. So, nice. yeah, it's pretty cool. And um, and you had indicated to me before, and that maybe uh, once it's delivered, uh, you may you know go down, have a look, take a picture, etc. So you know that's I'm going to say that's the most special thing I've done so far. Yeah, in this work. That's amazing, John. That's really, cool. I have another example for you too, John. I don't know if we've shared this with you before, and if we have. Um, I want to share it with the audience then, too, and bring them in on this. I had a lady come into the store um, probably around November, late October of last year. She came in the store. She just dropped by. She had never been to the store before. No idea what we sold in our store, but she came in, and she fell in love with your products. She just loved everything hockey, okay? And she was actually on her way later that evening to a fundraiser for her son's friend who played hockey and he had passed away in his early 20s. And they were having a fundraiser that evening 
to raise money for his family and for the cost of the funeral and stuff like that. And she was just kind of, kind of she came in totally not looking to shop or buy. She just wanted to see the store. And she stood there looking at your products. And I came up, I talked to her, I talked about you and kind of the process of how you do what you do. And um, she's like, and then she just said, well, you know, I'm, I'm actually going to this fundraiser tonight. And, you know, these, these items are just gorgeous. So I said to her, take what you want and we are going to pay for them. And we'll supply them. We're going to give them to you, take them to the fundraiser and use them to raise money. And she picked out about two or three of your items and and she just the look of astonishment in her face first of all to walk into some random store meet somebody for the first time fall in love with great products made by you john mm -hmm. and then for her to walk out of the store in disbelief holding like hugging hugging the stuff you made and hadn't paid for any and didn't pay for any of it she it was completely donated by us and yeah. And thank, thank you for yeah. making it. Yeah. She took it to this fundraiser and they were able to raise money for a family. So that's the kind of stuff that for us, that we can do little things like that to help people. When we have great makers like you in the store making beautiful quality products that people fall in love with. That's so cool for us to experience that. I wish you could be there every day to see yeah. those things happen too. When people fall in love with your products in person. But John, you're doing great things that people love and appreciate, yeah. and it means a lot to people. And I, I want you to know that we are we are beyond blessed to have your products in our store, because you can tell that you care about what you do, and to be with us from day one really yeah. is yeah. is is so wonderful. Yeah. So we really do appreciate you, John. We really, yeah. really do. Well, thank you. Everybody loves hockey, don't they? I mean, it's uh, I know. It's it's the it's the I I think it's the it's the it's the sticks and it's the colors and it's the you know it's the way they look the, the it's the it's not me so much as it, as it is kind of the the, the the it's the it's the product that kind of mm -hmm. if it sells itself but they're just so damn cool you know yeah. I just happen to be the guy who makes them and and you know you're right though I do not perhaps not as much as I'd like but I, there are a number of folks who've approached me in Toronto and I've approached them. And I will I will donate items to their fundraisers as well, friends, family, uh, in particular. You know, not a lot of folks that I don't know have approached me, but maybe after tonight they'll approach me more. But because I'm happy yeah. to to donate uh, items for these uh, for these fundraisers for sure. Yeah, and that's that's the beauty of having a small business a side hustle, is you have that flexibility. It's going to cost you time. I obviously understand that time and effort, but to be able to bless somebody with something that's going to help them just it's great you know and i i speaking for us mm -hmm. i appreciate you john yeah and that we have the opportunity to, to have your stuff in our store well it's great i um i i love i love being there and again you're in my first store and uh you got you guys have a fantastic store i when i when i when i go there i i often think geez most of this stuff's a lot better than my stuff in the store but i mean <laughs> but everything's different everything's, everything's different right and you know yeah. you, you have a fantastic selection of vendors an artist from all over uh, country. In fact, I've I've sent you an artist, right? Because I know you were you were looking for yes. um, artisans from from all over, and I, this is young fellow's stuff was fantastic. So, I, like he was, he was only like nineteen or twenty, and I met him, you know, just through my uh, work online with hockey. He does some hockey stick stuff, and I said, Jonathan, you got to contact my friends at Upcycle Canada. I'm sure they'd be happy to feature you. So I think I think you will be having That's his beautiful. stuff in yeah. your store. We we reached out to him too on we we actually reached out to him before we spoke to you, and then we put the, everything together where you had told us to talk to him. We had already reached out to him, and it was this weird oh. combination of conversation going on. But uh, we put it all together, and yeah, he's going to actually come on the podcast as well and talk about his journey. He mentioned that too. Now, of course, he's in somewhere in Quebec, so I guess yeah. But that's that. You know, sh goods have to be shipped, but. But yeah. myself being in Toronto, I, not, I like to drive down to St. Catharines once every few months to stock you up hmm. and visit. Yeah, great. Much appreciated. And have coffee yeah. with Jen last night. That's have right. Have coffee yeah. last night. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Yeah. So, John, we don't want to keep you too much longer because I know you have a lot to do. And you've got to, uh, you got to, you know, just be the, the king of all hockey sticks, of course. <laughs> so the best way to, to for somebody to get in touch with you, if they have a special project they got some sticks to donate to you. They just want to meet you and talk to you. What's the best way for somebody to reach out to John Lyon? Hmm. 
Well, I guess the easiest way it, to remember is to reach me on Instagram at the, with the handle at the hockey stick guy, one word. So that's okay. easy to remember. If they're watching this podcast, they can write it down on Instagram. Uh, or, of course, they can contact you at the store if they know Upcycle Canada in St. Catharines as well. But without a website yet, yeah, at the hockey stick guy on Instagram is the best way to reach me. And a lot of people do reach me on Instagram and from all over North America. Well, now they're going to hear you on a podcast, too. So we might get you a few more customers. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm ready. I, uh, I'm, I'm excited. Springtime, I'm hoping, is going to be good. And, yeah, I just, I lo- I, you know, the people, people, I sound corny, but people say to me, like you, I mean, you're a vendor. People who, in their homes, they say, oh, you know, thanks for, for doing that. And I say, ah, it's no problem. I love doing it. You know, and they, they send me pictures of their little boy or girl with the item that I've made for them. It's a, it's a huge, huge kick out of it. I get a huge kick out of it. So. A lot Excellent. of fun. That's, we that's really awesome. appreciate it, John. Yeah, yeah. It's good. good. Thank you so much, John. Thank you. And we're going to have everybody come to Thank see you. you. Um, one thing we like to do at the end of the podcast, John, is we ask for an Easter egg, a secret word yeah. for those that have listened all the way through the podcast to right now. We want to give out a little secret word to them. And what they're going to do is they're going to send that secret word from you back to us in an email or a message or somehow they're going to send that word back to us and we're going to do something special for them for reaching out. So we just want to honor those great listeners that have listened all the way to now. So John, do you have a secret word, any word you want, and they, the listeners have to give this word back to us? What would that word be, John? I don't know. I guess we could make it something simple like hockey. Hockey. Awesome. All right, that's the word. That works. So if I mean, you are hockey. listening... It could be hockey stick, but I mean, that's two words. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we're going to go with hockey. So if you've listened to this podcast all the way through with the great John Lyon here, uh, hockey stick man, this is the key word, hockey. You send that to us, DM it, email it, however you want to do, and we will send you something great. Special. And we're looking forward to that. That'll be great. Wow, what, be good. Good. Yes. what if I did... If I sent you the word hockey, would you give me a parting gift too? I think you're disqualified, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, that, that no, we'll, no, no, no. Yeah, I'm, it's I'm good, right? That's a good I thing. Know. It sounds exciting. Yeah. It's good. Uh-huh. So we, re- we appreciate your time, John. Yes. Thank you so much oh. for taking time for us. Thank you. And we're going to enjoy it. We'll be back in the store tomorrow selling great stuff from John Lyon. So thank you so much. Yeah. Well, right. with the, thank you. With the COVID restrictions uh, loosening and Springtime coming, yeah. I expect. Or I, I mean, all businesses, I think, will will do uh, do much better upcoming. It's very very exciting times. Yeah, we wish you well, John. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This has been the Upcycle Canada podcast. Thanks for listening today. We appreciate your feedback and would love to connect with you. Email your questions, comments, or suggestions to upcyclecanadapodcast at gmail.com. To find out more about our business and access links to all our social media sites, podcast notes, and more, please visit upcyclecanada.ca. A review of this episode on the podcast app of your choice is always appreciated. Please help us build this community by sharing our podcast with your family and friends. Our thanks to Jacob Moon for the instrumental backing track used in this podcast. Please visit jacobmoon.com for more on this talented Canadian artist. Join us again for more great topics, ideas, and practical steps to help you in your daily life. Thank you for listening. Let's keep this conversation going.